Hey YouTube, uh, it's Lightsword Night back again. I am making this video because one of my most popular videos of all time was the Card Packs uh, episode 1 that I did a very long time ago. So today I will be discussing every single booster pack, um, you know, in the normal series released by Konami over the years. And uh, yeah, this is going to take a while, but um, there will be links in the description. You can go to the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia if you want to learn more about any of the packs or anything. So uh, let's get started. The first pack ever released was uh, Legend of Blue Eyes. And uh, it was pretty much, I mean, aside from cards like Trihorn Dragon and a few others, it was essentially just the starter decks in a pack and, you know, with a little bit of expansion. So obviously, you know, uh, some of the best cards were Blue Eyes White Dragon, Dark Magician, Introduced Guy of the Fierce Knight, stuff like Raijiki, um, Dark Hole, you know, essentially everything. Monster Reborn, Polymerization, that type of stuff. Actually, uh, Red, Eyes, Red Eyes Black Dragon was in that pack as well. But yeah, that was essentially it, and it was... You know, most of the cards, I guess you could say, were, were found in either the Yugi deck or the Kaiba starter deck, so... In my opinion, it was more of an expansion. Okay, the second pack introduced was Metal Raiders, and this pack was amazing. Um, included a lot of great cards. Anything from uh, the trio Sanga, Kazajin, and uh, Suijin, as well as Gate Guardian, Harpy Lady Sisters, Black Skull Dragon, you know, that type of stuff. Witch of the Black Forest as well. Um, there were a lot of great cards. And in terms of uh, traps and magics, it introduced a lot of things that are today pretty much staples. You know, Mirror Force, Heavy Storm, Seven Tools I wouldn't say is a staple, but uh, it's, a, it's a great card. Uh, Magic Jammer, you know, that type of thing. So it was an all-around really good pack. The third pack in the series was Magic Ruler, although in America, I think it was because of a lawsuit, it was renamed to Spell Ruler, and all Magic cards were renamed to Spell Cards. Um, this set was also, well, I guess you could say all of the beginning sets had to be great because the series really took on, you know, and it's become what's become today. But uh, included cards from anywhere around the circuit, like Acts of Despair, Spellbinding Circle, uh, a whole bunch of ritual monsters, you know, such as Relinquished and so forth, um, Snatch Steel, there are a lot of them, Giant Trunade, Megamorph, uh, Mystical Space Typhoon, you know, all over the place. So that was also a really great pack. Okay, the fourth pack released was Pharaoh Servant, and um, yet again, you know, you've got... I can't even name all of them, so uh, if I miss a couple, please excuse me, because there's just so many in every single pack, and I'm tr trying to go through quickly. Uh, we got Jinzo, Parasite Parasite, I mean, Grave Robber, Dust Tornado, Call of the Haunted, Mirror Wall, you know, it goes, the list goes on and on. Magical Hats, Nobleman of Crossout, Premature Burial, Prohibition, Cold Wave, definitely, that's a great one. Some, obviously some cards are not as useful today. Gravity Bind, um, I know Buster Blader is in there, Feed to Mega Cyber, Gear Free, so on and so forth. But yes, so, with each pack, they added new spells and traps, new, you know, the entire game just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. The fifth pack in the series was Labyrinth of Nightmare, and uh, it introduced a lot of stuff, including, you know, <clears throat> your typical four-star 1900 beater, such as Gemini Elf, cards like Masked Beast, uh, Revival Jam, you know, all of the masks, of course, Dispel, Restrict, Accursed, Brutality, Torrential Tribute, which is an absolutely great card, Card of Safe Return, um... What else? Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. Whole bunch of stuff. Dark Necrofear. Uh, Des of course, Destiny Board. So F-I-N-A-L is another way to instantly win the game. And last but not least, I guess you could say, would probably be uh, Magic Cylinder. And for the sixth pack in the series, we have Legacy of Darkness. Now this is where, you know, the first time around as a kid, I was pretty much done with Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, half of these cards I don't even remember being from this pack, so that's how you can tell, but um, I know some of them, because, you know, I guess I was around for a few packs worth of cards, I suppose. We've got Yada Garasu, uh, Dark Ruler Hadaz, and uh, I think pretty much every single pack along the way, or at least so far, has released some really good uh, Magic and Trap cards to add to the series, but we've got Marauding Captain, um, Rhoda, Warrior Returning Alive, 
Um, a whole bunch of dragon cards, apparently. Fiber Jar. Creature Swap, which I did not know about, actually. And uh, Bottomless Trap Hole. And uh, I guess you could say Injection Fairy Lily, although that's not commonly used today. For the seventh pack, we've got Pharaonic Guardian. Uh, and in this pack, you've got Ring of Destruction, um, the three book cards, Book of Life, Book of Tayo, and Book of Moon. Cards like Needle Ceiling, Trap Dust Shoot, which is a great card. Um, the Gravekeeper set, essentially. Spirit Reaper, Different Dimension Capsule, Necro Valley, Terraforming, Barrel Behind the Door, Nightmare Wheel, and uh, Lava Golem, and so on and so forth. For the 8th pack, we've got Magician's Force, with which, um, in my opinion, it's probably not the greatest pack, but there are certain things that make it worthwhile. You've got uh, Dark Magician Girl, the X-Head Cannon, Y-Dragon Head, and Z-Metal Tank cards, as well as their fusions and the combinations with all of those. You know, um, Paladin of White Dragon, um, some more Amazonist support, Breaker the Magical Warrior, My Body is a Shield, Dark Paladin, and uh, Diffusion Wave Motion. Um, Dark Crisis was the ninth release TCG booster pack. Um, highly sought after cards were uh, Vampire Lord, DD Warrior Lady, uh, Butterfly Dagger, Alma, and uh, Terror King Archfiend, and so on. The tenth pack was Invasion of Chaos, and uh, it contained the highly sought after Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, as well as Chaos Emperor Dragon, Envoy of the End, and um, other cards such as uh, Levia Dragon Daedalus, Dark Magician of Chaos, Strike Ninja, Smashing Ground. Manticore of Darkness, and Dimension Fusion. Ancient Sanctuary was the 11th pack, and uh, actually it was the last pack to follow the traditional format of uh, 2 Secret Rares, 10 Ultra Rares, and 10 Super Rares. Um, I guess you could say the main cards are, are like Archlord Zerato, End of Anubis, Miseria Deville, you know, that type of stuff, Enemy Controller, and a few others, but all in all, in my opinion, this pack was probably not the most important, although it did, it did contain Beckoning Light and so forth. The twelfth pack was Soul of the Duelist. Um, it was the first pack, of course, as I've said, to follow the Japanese format, and that format was four ultra rares and seven super rares. Um, I guess you could say the highly sought after cards were the Horus set, the Arm Dragon set, Mobius the Frost Monarch, and Hollowed Life Barrier. The thirteenth English booster set to be released was Rise of Destiny. Highly sought after cards were the Creator, Destalos the Firestorm Monarch, and Dekoichi the Battle Chanted Locomotive. Um, just as an interesting fact, this was the first set um, in the line of sneak preview events. So The 14th set was Flaming Eternity, um, just as an interesting tidbit again. This was the first pack to be released without an image of Yami Yugi on it. The good cards from this set were Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys, uh, Grand Marg the Rock Monarch, um, Lightning Vortex, Threatening Roar, Deck Devastation Virus, and uh, so on and so forth. The 15th booster pack was the Lost Millennium, and... Uh, Highly sought after cards were Ancient Gear Golem, Brain Control, and Reshef the Dark Being. One thing of note is that this is the beginning of the GX series. Cybernetic Revolution is the 16th booster pack. Um, its main focus was uh, machine cards that were used in the anime, and uh, the highly sought after cards would include Cyber Dragon and its fusions, Twin Dragon, and uh, End Dragon. The 17th booster pack was Elemental Energy, and uh, it included a lot of elemental heroes, but the highly sought after cards would include Pot of Avarice, and uh, Gold, Woo Lord of the Dark World. The 18th booster pack was Shadow of Infinity, and the highly sought after cards would include Treeborn Frog, um, a few really good ritual monsters, as well as the three sacred beasts, such as, you know, Raviel, Lord of Phantasms, and so on. The 19th pack was Enemy of Justice, and uh, the highly sought after cards were Macrocosmos, Cyber Phoenix, Voltanus the Adjudicator, and Majestic Mech Oka, but it was also the first appearance of the Destiny Heroes set. The 20th booster pack was Power of the Duelist. Um, the highly sought after cards would include Chimera Tech Overdragon, Future Fusion, Overload Fusion, Neospatian Dark Panther, and Mausoleum of the Emperor. The 21st booster pack was Cyber Dark Impact, and this is actually a really interesting set because it was really small, it was only 60 cards, and uh, it sparked some controversy because fans believed that the rare cards released in the set were less playable than their rarity would attest to. For instance, the most often played cards like Chain Strike and Snipe Hunter were both relatively common as opposed to, you know, some of the other cards that were actually ultra rares and secrets and so on and so forth and they were less used. The 22nd booster pack was Strike of Neos. It released cards centered around Neospatians and Dark World and it was also the advent of the six Samurai cards. One thing that was interesting is that 
It also hails the return of the Secret Rare cards from the TCG, and it was the debut for TCG exclusive cards. The 24th booster pack was Tactical Evolution. It included the advent of Gemini Monsters. The highly sought after cards, I guess you could say, would be Rainbow Dragon and so on and so forth. It was the, um, the start of the Holographic Rare or Ghost Rare cards. And um, one interesting fact is that it also includes misprints of every rare in the set, um, and all of them have Secret Rare lettering foil. The 25th booster pack was Gladiator's Assault, and I guess all I'll say about this one is that it introduced the Gladiator Beasts, which uh, were a really great set of cards. The 26th booster pack was Phantom Darkness, and this was a, an absolutely fantastic pack. It introduced a lot of great cards such as um, Dark Arm Dragon, Cyber Valley, Dark Greffer, Ubel, and so on and so forth. The 27th booster pack was Light of Destruction, which is obviously one of my personal favorites just because I like Light Sworn. So it was the advent of the Light Sworn, and there was also some other stupid stuff in there like Arcana Force and Frogs and so on, but obviously the Light Sworn were the money cards. The 27th booster pack was Light of Destruction. Oh yeah!